to just add uh, some points on the travel lanes. We are going through this wave in order to strike a new equilibrium so that human society and virus can coexist. It's not an easy process, but the idea is to strike a new equilibrium. I like to explain to people is a bit like on an individual basis, if we fall sick and we recover from, or we are dealing with a chronic illness, you go to your doctor, doctor will say you need to, now that you have this illness, you need to change your lifestyle and your diet. So lifestyle, go out and exercise more often, that's encouraged. Go out and party late at night, that's not encouraged, the one do less. Food wise, eat more vegetables, eat more fruits, eat less meat, eat less fried stuff. And usually we don't tell the doctor this is confusing. Why is it that some things I do more, some things I do less? You know, it's clearer if I do everything more, I do everything less. We don't say that because we, in, we intuitively we understand we are striking a new equilibrium, a new balance. And that's what we are doing now. Where activities are driving up cases too high and adding pressure on our healthcare system, we need to do less. I need to dial back a bit. Where border control measures is so tight that it's hurting the long-term uh, viability of Singapore to make a living, we need to relax more. Which is why what Min Lawrence was saying, VTL continue, our, our categorization system, we continue to review uh, periodically because our students need to go overseas for attachment. All our workers in businesses, MNCs, they do need to travel to meet partners, suppliers, customers, visit their factories and operations. Researchers, scientists need to uh, have exchange. Some families will look forward to you know, having some family bonding time going overseas and back. So all this over restriction will have a long-term damage too to our economy. And likewise, we were mentioning earlier that Foreign workers, dormitory workers, they have been in their dorms for so long. We are starting a pilot to let them out, and I think it's the only sustainable way to do, to do things. So finding equilibrium in a way that is sustainable for the long term. Some things you'll find that we have to loosen some, some things we need to tighten. That is the phase that we are transiting in order to coexist with the virus. Maybe let me uh, reassure Philip and the uh, rest that uh, we are uh, continuing our uh, uh, discussion on the opening up more uh, vaccinated travel lanes as well as other uh, travel facilities. Uh, this is something that is uh, uh, ongoing and uh, even now it's, you, can, you will probably see that uh, we have increasing number of uh, workers returning to Singapore because it is also important. Uh, for some of our construction uh, uh, jobs, for example, to restart so that we ha they can complete the BTO flats uh, as soon as possible. So some of these are continuing and we are continuing to explore opportunities for uh, BTLs. But at the same time, we also have to bear in mind that uh, the, uh, the pilot with uh, Germany and Brunei only started a few weeks ago and the results, as uh, Minister uh, Wong mentioned, is uh, very encouraging. We have uh, just one case being picked up and therefore, we are expanding uh, the VTL uh, uh, channel. And also, we are also allowing uh, businessmen who are serious businessmen who need to travel around the world. They are headquarters is in Singapore. If we do not allow them to travel in the region, they're just not possible to operate out of Singapore. So for some of these uh, very critical business travels, we are facilitating so that business can continue. Otherwise, uh, Singapore will be cut off from the rest of the world and this will cause uh, permanent damage to our economy and to our future. So it's something that we have to adjust, we have to calibrate, but we have to do so safely as well.